All right, for statistics and probability, if you only have a few hours to study this, what should you cover? Well, I've done every single exam question, so these are the most important topics. These are the very important topics. They show up most often on exams. Um, I thought maybe I would start with a really bad statistics joke. Two mathematicians are going hunting, and they're hunting and shooting at a target. And one of them hits 10 meters to the left of the target, the other one hits 10 meters to the right of the target, and they high-five each other and say, we got him! So bad. All right, so if we look at this. The very first one here, the probability introduction. The reason I put this in here is because uh, this covers a whole bunch of things from your formula booklet. This covers things like uh, complementary events, uh, mutually exclusive, independent events, this kind of thing. So these combined events, those show up there. And those are common in paper one and in paper two. Actually, I want to point out, uh, take a little aside here, statistics and probability, this is the topic of the six topics you get on your exams, um, this is the one that's most heavily weighted. In other words, most points on average come from statistics. That's like the number one unit usually. When I was looking at each different exam, which unit wins for most number of points assigned to it, statistics and probability almost always wins. So this is the big one, that's where there's a lot of different very important topics, that's because it's heavily featured on exams, on both paper one and two. Next we have tree diagrams. This is a nice skill to help to make uh, complicated looking probability questions look a little bit easier. Those show up pretty evenly on paper one and paper two. Next we have conditional probability. This is what do you do if uh, you're given information like a probability of one thing happening given that another event happened. This is a matter of notation here. This shows up paper one and two as well. Next we have cumulative frequency. These are these kind of graphs. You might have seen them. They look like this. They kind of go like that. So these are things where you can actually measure um, things like the median, um, first quartile, the third quartile. You can measure percentiles, that sort of thing. And those show up pretty commonly on paper one and two as well. Next we have something called linear regression. This is one that um, you know, you're given a whole bunch of you know, dots or a whole bunch of data points basically, and you're trying to use your calculator to find an equation for this one. So it's sort of whoosh, sorry, an equation of a line of best fit here. You're also asked to do things like Pearson's uh, correlation coefficient and then using that to predict. This is super easy, I think, but also very, very common. These show up on very, very often. They show up on exams, and they show up pretty much only on paper two. I hope that makes sense because you need a calculator to do it. So duh, it shows up on the one with a the calculator. Then we have using a calculator for statistics. This is things like, uh, yeah, you have a big list of numbers. How do you actually use your calculator for basic statistics, like the mean and the median and the uh, standard deviation, some of those things you might want to know. No surprise there, paper two. Expected value. This is this thing called E capital X. This is one of those, I personally think it's one of the easiest things to learn, and yet the notation really messes with students. And these show up very often. This is a very common type of question. This expected value. So super, super important. And it very often shows up on paper one. I just want to make sure these all line up here like this. So next we have normal distribution. That is uh, probably the most commonly occurring thing on exams. You'll see that right here if I do my uh, predictions here later. But normal distribution, this is, a, Americans like to call this a bell curve. So this is like, you know, if you have a distribution of data that kind of looks like this right here, we look at what's the mean, that's the spike here the, in the top. We have a standard deviation, that's how much everything else deviates from the mean on average. And you could be asked like, you know, what's the, What's the probability of finding a value between here and here? So you often use your calculator in order to solve this. So you use your calculator to give you a probability. Normal distribution two is when you work the opposite case. Here you're given a probability and you're hoping to find either the value or the mean or the standard deviation. We use something called inverse norm. That's the really important, inverse normal. That also shows up on paper two. And next we have binomial distribution. I think that one's super easy as long as you know a few tricks, which I'll show you. Uh, this is if you have something where there's only two different choices. That's why it's called binomial, right? There's only two choices. So it could be yes or no or true or false, success or failure. And we look at things like how do you, 
How do you know what's the probability of, let's say you flip a coin 5,000 times or something like that, what's the probability of getting 200 heads or 200 tails or whatever? So here we can look at how to know exactly a probability or even uh, what's called binome CDF or cumulative distribution function, how to get a probability up to and including that value. And this is also on paper two. So you can see these values show up, uh, these topics show up really all over the place. Um, and we can even make a prediction. We can even make a prediction what's going to show up on the exam. Um, in paper one, it's most likely going to be, you know, this is in order of probability here. So we have conditional probability shows up quite often on paper one. So that's the most, most common thing. Next most common is expected value. After that is tree diagrams, then combined events, things like um, uh, independent events or mutually exclusive. Then we have cumulative frequency diagrams. But for paper two, the most common thing by far is normal distribution. That shows up very often on paper two. Next most common is linear regression, so finding this equation of the line. Um, after that, we have binomial distribution, and after that comes inverse normal. In other words, this is the harder version of normal distribution. This inverse normal, that's this uh, normal distribution two. And then last, we have combined events. So these are the most commonly occurring things, the most probable uh, different topics in this order uh, for your next exams. Let's get started.